Hello everyone. Welcome to my lecture on quinolones and fluoroquinolones with me, Sanjay Dekshet. Uh, today we'll be talking about quinolones and fluoroquinolones a, bit, a bit briefly. And in our next lecture, we'll be talking about individual drugs. So when we say fluoroquinolones or fluoroquinolones, what are the different things that comes to your mind? It is either quinolones, ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, or various other fluxacins, right? So you can think of tablets, maybe, maybe the IV drugs, the eye ointment, or the eye drops. And then you can also think about UTIs. You may think about community acquired pneumonia, maybe TB second line drug therapy, right? Or it could be about photosensitivity of the drugs or arthropathy. Okay, so let us have a look as to what are quinolones and when were they are introduced, right? So quinolones, they are a series of antibacterial agents, which was first introduced in 1962. And the first agent to be identified was nilidexic acid. This was a fortuitous discovery, quite like penicillin, in that George Lesher and his team, they were trying to synthesize fluoroquine, and then they identified the new molecule of nilidexic acid, which was effective against gram-negative bacteria, and which became useful for the treatment of urinary tract infections. So this is the timeline of various fluoroquinolones and quinolones that were introduced. Have a look. 1962, there is the discovery of nilidexic acid during chloroquine synthesis, right? Then comes norfloxacin, the discovery of norfloxacin, sinoxacin, oxonelic acid, uh, ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, they're out here. Then we can see that timafloxacin and spafloxacin, Grepafloxacin, levofloxacin, trovafloxacin, gatifloxacin, moxifloxacin, gemifloxacin, and garinofloxacin. So when we talk about quinolones, the quinolones, they are broadly divided into two categories. One is the non-fluorinated quinolones, of which the drugs are nalidexic acid, oxanilic acid, and sinoxacin, whereas the others are fluoroquinolones or fluorinated quinolones. These are there are various fluoroquinolones as we just named them, right? Ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin are the ones that fall in second, uh, second generation of quinolones. So the structure differs in compounds of different generation and then they differ in the antibacterial spectrum too. Let us have a look at the drugs that fall on the first generation. It's nilidexic acid, oxanilic acid, and sinoxacin. In second generation, it's norfloxacin, lomifloxacin, ofloxacin, ciprofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin is very much common for use in Nepal, right? You might have heard of norfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, and ofloxacin very, very much. Then comes the third generation agents, the levofloxacin, the spafloxacin, the gatifloxacin, and moxafloxacin. The newer fourth generation constitutes of trovafloxacin and electrofloxacin. So if you look into the structure as to what are the different structures, we just said that fluoroquinolones, they are different from quinolones in that they contain the fluorine group at R6 position, right? So you can see that this is the R6 position out here. So C6 position out here, right? So this is the basic structure of the fluoroquinolone. We can have a look. And in this position, we see that there is substitution in R1 and R7 places in many uh, different compounds. If you see into it, right, you can see that the R6 and, sorry, the R1 and R7 position has been substituted by different compounds. Okay, everyone have a look at this chart. This chart talks about the structure activity, uh, activity relationship of fluoroquinolones. Right? There's a little bit more chemistry into it, but then this chart will help you understand as to why different molecules of fluoroquinolones, they have got different spectrum of effects, why they have got different metabolism, why they are eliminated differently. Right? All these things are controlled by the structure activity relationship. And we see that the substitution in different places uh, is important for different sorts of activity. When we see that, the R1 position out here, it is necessary for controlling the activity. And the cyclopropane molecule is the most effective one, whereas cyclobutane and 
the ethyl group this group will have lesser potency again this the r2 position it is close to dna dna binding site and the h is optimal out here we should not be substituting this with anything else we should just have h molecule out here and likewise this position the coh group this is essential for for binding with the dna guide complex and therefore no modification of this position is possible because if we substitute the cwoh then there is going to be a different kind of uh, the effect will be lost altogether this the, similarly this helps control the activity for gram positive bacteria if there is an amine then it will be highly active against gram positive bacteria and if it will have h out here then the activity against gram negative bacteria gram positive bacteria will be low similarly this f we said earlier when we were talking about the difference between fluoroquinolones and quinolones that this fluoroquinolones or f group is essential for potent antibacterial activity and it enhances the inhibition of dna gyrase and penetration into the cells hence the addition of fluorine to the quinolone molecules turns it into fluoroquinolone a much better antibacterial agent the substitution at r1 it helps control the activity in that five and six membered rings they are most active basic nitrogen is required for oral activity and activity against gram positive bacteria is also dependent on r7 substitution ring alkylation is known to improve gram positive activity and impre also increase half life for activity against gram negative bacteria as well okay if any of you is very much interested into it you can go and look at structure activity relationship in much detail but then this doesn't come under pharmacology it comes under a different subject itself called medicinal chemistry so let us move ahead now now let us look at the advantage of fluoroquinolones over quinolones first we see that the spectrum of activity has increased next is lower mic values or minimum effective concentration values then the bioavailability is increases right uh, the serum half life is higher there is high margin of safety and low cases of bacterial resistance similarly the versatility of doses forms is makes it suitable for both oral and parenteral uh, administration also in case of superfluoxacin we said that it also comes as eye drops and eye ointment earlier right it has got high penetration into the tissues like concentration in the lung sputum muscle bone prostate phagocytes it increases that uh, it exits that in plasma so the treatment in various places it is easier like in cases of community acquired pneumonia for prostatitis for bone infections right so in all these cases the fluoroquinolones are better suited also the urinary and biliary concentrations are 10 to 50 fold higher than that in plasma so it becomes a drug of choice when it comes to treatment of utis but then well, again we need to have the culture and sensitivity report to move on to fluoroquinolones to treat the utis with fluoroquinolones but however in case of prostatitis fluoroquinolones are the first agent of choice itself let us look have a look at the classification of quinolone antibiotics in respect to its antimicro antimicrobial spectrum right when it comes to the first generation agent we already named them as nalidexic acid and sinoxacin right they have got activity against gram negative organisms but not against pseudomonas species uh, so it is generally used in uncomplicated urinary infections the second generation likewise constitutes of norfloxacin lomifloxacin inoxacin ofloxacin and ciprofloxacin again the antimicrobial spectrum increases in that the uh, it's it is active against gram negative organisms right and also includes the pseudomonas species which was not in, not included out here again there is some activity against gram positive organism including staph aureus but not strep pneumonia and activity against some atypical pathogens so it is used for uncomplicated and complicated utis pyelonephritis sexually transmitted diseases prostatitis skin and soft tissue infections now coming on to the third generation the third generation constitutes of levofloxacin spavofloxacin gatifloxacin and moxifloxacin right so antimicrobial spectrum again increases from that of second generation in that it is same as second gener generation agents and plus there is expanded gram positive coverage in that 
penicillin sensitive and penicillin resistant strep pneumonia can be treated by the third generation cephalic third generation fluoroquinolones and it has again expanded activity against atypical pathogens that's why it can be used in ex acute exacerbations of chronic bronchitis and also against community acquired pneumonia the fourth generation which constitutes of trovafloxacin the antimicrobial spectrum is same as third generation agents plus there is broad anaerobic coverage as well so the indication is same as for first second and third generation however we do not give this for for excluding complicated utis and pyelonephritis plus intra abdominal infections nosocomial pneumonia and pelvic infections in all these cases it can be used okay let us have a look at the mechanism of action of fluoroquinolones when we say the mechanism of action of fluoroquinolones what it basically does is it's a it's a drug that inhibits the dna right so what does it basically do it in it is known to inhibit two main enzymes bacterial enzymes called topoisomerase 4 and dna kinase or topoisomerase 2 so what we can see out here is that it has topoisomerase 2 the role of topo, topoisomerase 4 is there to help on is there to help the uncoil the dna so that the replication of dna goes on smoothly right and dna kinase is an enzyme that maintains the helical twist of the dna so by blocking both dna kinase and topoisomerase 4 it stops the supercoiling of the dna molecule and nearby thereby it hinders in splitting of the dna molecule into individual strands and when individual strands are not formed then the replication of dna is not possible thereby the drug inhibits the bacterial growth we can see that it inhibits dna kinase or topoisomerase 2 right this is a direct action and this leads to an arrest in dna replication gram negative bacteria they are known to be more susceptible again it is also known to inhibit dna topoisomerase 4 this is however an indirect action and it works by blocking the enzyme's functions delinking the dna daughter molecule and gram positive bacteria is known to develop resistance rapidly by working on this same dna topoisomerase 4 now time to look at the clinical uses when we say clinical uses basically it is divided into the clinical use of quinolones the or the first generation quinolones and the clinical use uses of the fluoroquinolones will again as we said at the start of the lecture we'll be talking about individual fluoroquinolone drugs later on in our next lecture so let us have a look at nalidixic acid nalidixic acid is primarily used for ur as urinary antiseptic it's a second line drug and after following nitrofurantoin however nitrofurantoin and nalidixic acid they should not be used concurrently as antagonism is known to occur Na also nalidixic acid can be given in case of ampicillin resistant sigella enteritis fluoroquinolones however can be used in lot many cases we also saw in the chart before right so it can be used in utis it has got high cure rates again in case of gonorrhea typhoid it's the drug of choice again for ga bacterial gastroenteritis meningitis prostatitis it can be used in lot many cases so let us have a look at individual cases in case of utis they are most commonly used agents in utis right and they are known to be very effective against gram negative bacteria like e coli proteus and enterobacter which are very much the causative agents of utis again they are superior to cotrimoxazole for the treatment of utis so this uh, the the use of fluoroquinolones in utis is very high norfloxacin ofloxacin they both are highly used for utis treatment uh, it is also effective for the treatment of bacterial prostatitis as they are concentrated in the prostate tissue ciprofloxacin 750 mg bd for 3 weeks is used for the treatment of upper utis let's have a look at the case of prostatitis alone the agents causing utis are the same agents that lead to acute bacterial prostatitis right so the second generation quinolones they are widely used in order to treat prostatic infection like ciprofloxacin ofloxacin norfloxacin and levofloxacin all these drugs they are known to be bactericidal against gram negative bacilli levofloxacin is the most effective agent against susceptible strains of enterococcus faecalis enterococcus faecalis is implicated with chronic bacterial prostatitis while 
the agents that caused UTI were implicated in acute bacterial prostatitis, right? Uh, however, levofloxacin is effective against Enterococcus fecalis as well, and it can be given once daily. Although all of the second generation, they can be used for the treatment of prostatitis. US FDA has approved only ofloxacin for the treatment of prostatitis. Okay, the case of typhoid fever. Ciprofloxacin 500 mg to 750 mg BD for 10 days is preferred drug for the treatment of typhoid. Again, prefloxacin and ofloxacin can be used too. It is also effective in eliminating the carrier state of salmonella typhi when the therapy is continued for six weeks. They are known to be effective in cases of typhoid that are already known to be resistant to chloramphenicol. Let us have a look at the skin and soft tissue bone infections. Skin and soft tissue infections that are due to strep aureus, Staphylococcus aureus, and gram negative bacilli, they require prolonged antimicrobial therapy. And fluoroquinolones are often used in combination with an anti anaerobic agent, especially in case of diabetic foot infections. We said that only the fourth generation fluoroquinolones, they have got broad anti anaerobic, anti -anaerobic activity, right? All other fluoroquinolones would require the combination of anti anaerobic agent for the treatment of diabetic foot infections, which is basically a mixed kind of infection. In case of eye infections, ciprofloxacin eye drops and ointments, they are used very much for the treatment of conjunctivitis due to gram-negative organisms. Fluoroquinolones are also used in case of mycobacterial infections, right? In case of MDR-TB, these uh, fluoroquinolones are considered as a second line drugs during the treatment of MDR-TB or multidrug resistant TB. They are also used in case of atypical mycobacterial infections, uh, mycobacterium, avium complex infections in AIDS patients and in leprosy. The fluoroquinolones, they are used in combination with other antimicrobial agents as well for the treatment of mycobacterial infections. Fluoroquinolones are also effective in meningococcal carrier state. Ciprofloxacin has been used to eradicate meningococci from nasopharynx and thereby eliminate the carrier state. However, the drug of choice out here is rivampicin. Uh, this, the next is gonococcal infections. Cervicitis, urethritis, pelvic inflammatory disease due to Neisseria gonorrhea, they respond to single dose of ciprofloxacin or 400 mg of ofloxacin. However, since resistance is on the rise, ceftriaxone or the third generation cephalosporin is the drug of choice right now. So, when treating gonococcal infections in pregnancy, we should not be going for quinolones or fluoroquinolones. In case of bacterial diarrhea, they are known to be very effective for treatment of variety of GI infections caused by E. coli, Cygella, uh, and Salmonella, etc. They are also known to be effective in treatment of traveler's diarrhea, and they are used as a substitute for cotrimoxazole. Norfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, and ofloxacin therapy of three to five days is adequate for the treatment of bacterial diarrhea. Let us look into the clinical uses that has been approved by the US FDA. The uncomplicated urinary tract infections, as we said earlier, which can be done with quinolones like nalidixic acid, synoxacin, right? So they are there. And apart from this, also the fluoroquinolones can be used for the same. The complicated urinary tract infections and pyelonephritis, we are going to use only the fluoroquinolones and not the quinolone type. Then for lower respiratory tract infections, the uses, however, limited. For skin and skin structure infections, it can be used. Urethral, service, service, cervical, and gonococcal infections. Urethral, cervical, chlamydial, and gonococcal infections. Again, bone and joint infections, gram negative bacterial infections, infectious diarrhea, typhoid fever, prostatitis, acute sinusitis, sinusitis acute exacerbations of chronic bronchitis, community acquired pneumonia, intra abdominal infections, gynecologic and pelvic infections, and nosocomial infections. All this, in all these cases, fluoroquinolones can be used. And the fourth generation agent, trovafloxacin, is reserved only for life and limb threatening infections. Now let us have a look at the various adverse effects. 
Chloroquine neurons are said to have a generally good safety record. However, the various toxicities, various kinds of toxicity can be seen, like GI upsets, which is most common, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and bad taste is common out here. Again, the hypersensitivity reaction, which constitutes a RAS, photosensitivity, pruritus, and swelling of lips is there. CNS disturbances like dizziness, headache, confusion, convulsion, and or cold seizures, they all can happen. However, seizure is relatively rare and occurs only during only at high doses. Hemolysis can also be seen in glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficient patients. There may be bone def deformity in the newborn patients born to the mothers who are treated with chloroquinolones, and therefore they should also be avoided in children below 12 years of age. Though the fluoroquinolones and quinolones, they were discovered in from 1960 onwards, right? But then there are various new side effects of the drugs that are surfacing lately. In 2008, tendonitis and the cases of tendonitis were established and FDA issued a warning that the, the, there should be box warning about tendonitis and may call, lead to tendon rupture. Again, the case of neuropathy was established in 2013 disturbing side effects may be there this was found in 2016 in 2018 it was found that it can lead to mental side effects and low blood sugar again due to the risk of aortic aneurysm the fluoroquinolones are known to be uh, should be avoided in cases of patients with hypertension elderly patients and patients with certain genetic conditions like marfan syndrome and ehlers danlos syndrome there are different proportions of, of quinolones and fluoroquinolones that are available in the market, right? This is taken from our book of Cadzen. So you can see that ciprofloxacin, it comes as oral, parenteral, and ophthalmic preparation. Again, there is gemifloxacin, which comes as oral, levofloxacin and oral, parenteral, and ophthalmic, lomifloxacin as oral, moxifloxacin, oral, and parenteral, norfloxacin as oral, ofloxacin as oral, ophthalmic, and otic preparation. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you. Do tune in for our detailed lecture on fluoroquinolones, which we'll be releasing after a third while. Thank you.